Well, next to the case of the Irish women who received breast implants made by the French company PIP, the implants were made with industrial rather than medical silicone. The result has been a lot of pain and real worry for these women. So how was this product approved by the regulatory authorities and could something like this happen again? This report from Adele McAllister. The stories are horrific. The women are terrified. They don't know what is happening. I feel like a bit of a guinea pig at the moment. We don't know for definite what the health implications are from these implants. All the silicone was just leaking out into the glands and into my body. Over 1,500 women received PIP breast implants with four clinics in Ireland. They were made in France with industrial silicone, material that was never intended to enter the human body. The consequences are not known, a cause of extreme anxiety for these women. Lisa Fair from Dublin and Jean Nocter from Wicklow had theirs with the Harley Medical Group. All my life growing up I had sisters with boobs, I had none, didn't feel much like a woman, felt like I had no confidence. The women were completely unaware that their implants were any different from any other. Then last year confusion broke out as Jean-Claude Maz, the head of the French implant manufacturer PIP, was arrested and charged with fraud and involuntary injury. Jean-Claude Mars, when he was arrested, admitted that they were using industrial grade silicone and the reason he gave they were using it was that it was cheaper. The silicone they were using cost €5 euro per litre as opposed to €35 euro per litre for the medical grade American approved silicone that they should have been using. Medical grade silicone has had a lot of tests and assessments done to it um, to try and ensure its safety for the patient if indeed you do get a rupture. Um, whereas with the industrial grade silicone, these processes haven't been carried out. The European Scientific Committee says it's too early to say what the health implications are, if any. Breast implants have a 1-2% to chance of rupture, but concerns were raised in France about the rupture rate of PIP. Lisa is waiting for an MRI. A previous scan showed rippling in her implant. Three years ago, she went back to the clinic with pain and inflammation. He examined me. He told me that I was fine, that I possibly pulled a muscle um, in my chest and he prescribed me painkillers. In 2010, the Irish Medicines Board issued a safety notice telling clinics to identify PIP patients and report any adverse reactions. But some of the women heard nothing until late last year through the media. And fears of health risks from a French-made breast implant, thousands of women may have them removed. I heard about it in Christmas week. Uh, it was on the 9 o'clock news. Nobody had approached me about it. Nobody had said anything to me about it. So I rang the clinic on the 22nd of the December. They assured me that it was nothing to do with me, that I was fine. I was actually very upset because I felt like I was kind of crusading to find out whether I had the PIP implants or not and it was kind of like a full-time job trying to find out. I mean, I was on the phone every day. When I finally got confirmation, I actually sat back and did get quite upset and worried as well about my health. In a statement, the Harley Medical Group said they had in the region of 1,100 PIP implant patients dating back to 2000 and have written to the majority of our patients. Patients with confirmed ruptures within 10 years can have the implants removed free. Those within the last six years can have them removed and replaced for free. Lisa has formed a lobby group for PIP patients. They want the clinics to remove and replace all implants for free, regardless of whether they're ruptured. The chief medical officer is due to meet the clinics early this month. We do not want the taxpayer to be involved in this. But the minister, as the authority in this country, to step forward and hold these clinics accountable for their duty of care to us. The response internationally has differed. In France, the government has said all 30,000 women there could have their implants removed for free. In the UK, the NHS said it would remove any implants they put in and would help patients of private clinics who needed them out for clinical reasons. We have no evidence that the PIP implants are going to increase their risk of getting breast cancer or other diseases or make them unwell. Uh, obviously, though, if you have a, a product that's placed inside a patient and we have an unknown factor as to the safety of it, that is going to cause, you know, definitely distress and concern for a patient. The PIP implant was approved for use as a medical device by the European CE mark. And this has raised serious concerns about how the whole regulatory process works and how the makers of PIP were able to use industrial silicon undetected for nearly a decade. Klein Hospital in Kildare has 230 PIP patients. All were contacted, offered free scans and replacements for ruptures. 
the implants were CE approved. Now, that's what we rely on. If we can't rely on CE approval, well, we may close our doors the same as everybody else. And what happened basically was the implants were, they're made by a French company, they were passed by a German company, and they were 100% okay. Subsequent to that, they started using cheaper industrial gel, and this is the problem. Experts have warned that um, the the system of certification for these medical devices is a smokescreen for faulty and defective products. So unless there's a complete overhaul of the CE um, system and accreditation and approval system, it certainly can happen again. In a statement, the hospital group in Dublin said it is offering to carry out removal procedures free of charge and replacement procedures at a reduced rate. The Shandon Clinic in Cork closed last year, leaving its PIP patients with nowhere to go. We spoke to one former patient. Last May I found one small lump and I never thought it was anything to do with the implants. I thought it was a cancerous lump. So I panicked. I went out to um, Waterford Region Hospital. They did scans and that showed that the silicone had leaked into four of my lymph glands under my arm. and the glands under my breastbone and that the left implant was ruptured. It was like a nerve pain, you know, shooting down your arm and across your chest. Unable to get a formal response from Shandon Clinic, Maria rang other clinics for help. Because her surgery was complex, the quotes were up to €8,000. Eventually, Cosmetico, who've never used PIP implants, replaced them at a reduced price. Where I worked, closed down, and I was only barely able to raise the amount because Cosmetico helped me out. It took two hours, the operation, you know, to clean out all the silicone and everything. And the pain was unreal. I never went through anything like that. I was stressed out of my mind with it. Our request to Shandon Clinic to respond went unanswered. Because the PIP implants were approved medical devices when the clinics the used them. mark over who should take responsibility. At the moment the situation looks relatively bleak, uh, but of course we're still at a preliminary stage from the point of view of our investigation of liability of other third parties. Um, there is a hope uh, that there might be a European um, compensation mechanism set up, but that's very much a hope at the moment rather than a certainty. I hopefully I won't, like in the long run, have any side effects. I don't know because there's still some silicone left on my breastbone. Because it's too close to my heart, they can't operate. Like, I mean, if they came along and suddenly said that they found something dangerous in it, I'd be in trouble, like.